you've got to hold grace in one hand and truth in the other. Jesus did this so perfectly as our model. Welcome back to another episode of Living Life in Tune. This is your host, Adam Lee. This is the show where we talk about keeping the most important things in life in tune. To me, these are things like faith, purpose, leadership, personal growth, manhood, love, all of these things that I think we need to be intentional about, striving not for perfection, but for excellence, getting better at these things each and every single day. Welcome back. If you've been tuning in, this is episode 37, Making Disciples, part three. If you're listening for the first time, you are landing right in the middle of a conversation we've been having about making disciples. So if you want to get caught up, go back Two episodes start at part one, making disciples. We talked about first about becoming a fisher of men, about how Jesus himself told Peter that he would teach him to become a fisher of men and how this takes intentionality. We need to wake up and get after it when God says to go into all the world and make disciples. This this means being proactive and going after it, and it all starts with one person making a disciple. And so in the next episode, we talked about part two, about playing the long game, about the mentality of this. This is a life. This is a commitment for the rest of my life to make disciples. And it's a it's a life decision, not so much a just a one and done and about how we have to be playing the long game. This is part three. I'm going to be talking about grace and truth, grace and truth, such an essential part of making disciples. A big part of this conversation on making disciples is just that um, that in Matthew, Jesus commands us to go into all the world and make disciples. And how I look at this verse as a mandate on every believer's life that no one is exempt from being responsible for making disciples. If you call yourself a believer today, uh, I believe the responsibility is on you to go into the world and make disciples. So if we're going to do that... Grace and truth are a big part of making disciples. Uh, It might come as a surprise to you, but our thoughts and behaviors are not always good. Oh man, drop the mic. My thoughts and my behaviors are not always good. Um, We are all walking through a process together called progressive sanctification. This is a big fancy term just to say that we're all becoming more like Christ together and we're all in different stages of that. We're all in different places and maturity and becoming more like Christ. You may have been following him for 20 years, 30 years, or your whole life, and you're more like him today because because you've had the time to work it out. And then you might be listening and you, you, you might have only been following Christ for a couple of months or weeks, and you, you um, you're looking at becoming like Christ, like this huge mountain that is unscalable, and um, you're you've got uh, a long way to go, and um, so we're all on that journey together. It's no, um, it's not a race, but we're all on that journey to becoming more like Christ together, and um, oftentimes, uh, it's not oftentimes, every time. We are not perfect, so when it bec- when it comes to becoming more like Christ, we're on this journey together of of thinking and behaving more like Him each and every day. We don't always, um, we don't we don't come to perfection uh, until we die. It, it, the Bible talks about glorification in the end when we'll be fully made like Christ. But until then, uh, we might be saved, but we're all in transformation. And all transformation is gradual, okay? All transformation is gradual. And we're all striving to become more like Him together. So, with that being true, having grace and having truth, grace in one hand, truth in the other hand, is how we move forward. Remember, we've already... We've already been intentional about this in episode one. We've already decided to play the long game in episode two. Now, this is episode three. Uh, We have to learn how to hold grace in one hand, truth in another hand, and about how to uh, correct wrong behaviors and wrong thinking in ourselves and in other people. Um, If you're going to make disciples, you're going to have to both correct others 
and correct yourself. It's a life of correction. Becoming more like Christ, sanctification, is a life of um, turning away from your sin, correcting your mentality, correcting your behaviors, admitting you're wrong, asking for forgiveness. This is all part of becoming like him. And so if you're going to be serious about making disciples, you're both going to have to correct others and you're going to have to yourself be corrected. And it, it all it is all made possible by having grace and truth. Okay. You're probably a natural at one of these. You probably have are either a natural at being gracious, having grace, or you're probably a natural at speaking truth and having truth. And um, oftentimes, we're, we're, we're a natural at one, and then we have to work on the other one. I don't think anybody's a natural at both of these, except for Jesus. And um, so whether you're a natural at speaking the truth, and it's truth, 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 uh, or you're a natural at just being gracious, and it's all about grace. Uh, you have to learn how to do both of these things. And so I'm going to talk about, for the rest of this episode, what it looks like to hold grace and truth, one in each hand, and how to move forward. If you are a person like me, where I tend to be uh, strong in grace, but weak in truth, I, I tend to be heavy on grace, all right? If you're anything like me, uh, what heavy on grace means is that you tend to minimize conflict. Okay. So if something, someone does or says something wrong to you, you tend to minimize it and kind of push it down. And, and if you're heavy on grace, you'll say things like, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's all good. You know, you got to go along to get along. Everything's going to be fine. And you tend to minimize conflict and you act your preference if you're heavy on grace is to act like it's not a big deal you're less likely to confront anyone's actions or anyone's thoughts because you're heavy on grace telling the truth in love does not come naturally to you so if you're heavy on grace like me i get it i i'm just uh, being honest, I'm heavy on grace, light on truth. So what we need to learn if we're heavy on grace is how to present the truth to others and how to learn that it's okay when others present the truth to us. Tell your brother his fault. Tell your brother or sister their fault. Check this out. Matthew 18, 15 goes like this. If your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault. Between you and him alone, if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. The responsibility is on us to present the fault to our brother. So for heavy on grace, we got to take into consideration that we also need grace is just in one hand. In the other hand, we have to be holding truth. We have to be going to our brother in love and telling him or her their fault and um, Matthew 18 is a direct command to do that. And then this one is so beautiful. Uh, if you're light on grace, I mean, light on truth and heavy on grace like me, pay attention to this right here. James 5, 19 through 20. It says this, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Listen, if you're heavy on grace, light on truth, you need to wake up. I need to wake up to the fact that the responsibility is on me to bring people back from their wandering. If they've wandered away from the truth, it is my responsibility to bring them back from wandering and this passage in James tells us a promise that if we're willing to take responsibility and to bring somebody back from wandering, we'll save their soul from death and we'll cover a multitude of sins. So we need to, we need to pick up truth with the other hand, realize that we can't just be heavy on grace and it's a, it's not a big deal. And um, no harm, no foul, and um, minimize conflict. No, listen, if we see sin in a brother or in a sister, we it's our responsibility to tell them their fault 
and then to bring them back to the truth, to save them from their wandering. And um, if if you're like me today, that means that means being honest with people. That means uh, letting go of some people pleasing tendencies, and that means letting go of of needing people to like you. And that means just picking up that truth in the other hand and presenting them. Listen, the way you're thinking about this is not is not correct. It's not godly. It's not biblical. The way you're behaving right now is 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 you. I can tell you've wandered away from the truth. So my friend, my brother, come back to the truth. And I, and and. And listen, your advantage is, is you're already strong with grace. So when you apply truth, you're going to have a great balance of grace and truth. It's going to work together for you. But you cannot get into the habit of only being gracious and never telling the truth. That's not going to make disciples in your life. All right. So that's if you're heavy on grace. All you need to do is pick up truth and begin to, and begin to share it with people. Listen, here's the truth about it. Uh, the way you're thinking is not right. The way you're acting is not right. And that is what you need to do moving forward. Presenting the truth is a crucial part of making disciples. Now, talking to my other folks out here who are heavy on truth, you have absolutely no problem whatsoever sharing the truth, being blunt. Uh, you don't need people to like you. you you have abs- you're you're a firm believer and iron sharpens iron and you have to speak some of you are even eager to point out the faults of others the wrong thinking the wrong behaviors uh you you're 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 eager about it it gives you you're, you're excited to share that with them it's because you're heavy on truth and what you need to learn if you're heavy on truth is how to present the truth with grace, realizing that it's not just all about speaking the truth. It's about holding truth in one hand and picking up grace in your other hand. And you'll need how to, you'll need to learn how to present the truth with grace. And, um, to do this, you'll need to, you'll need to be motivated differently, not just by correcting something and making things perfect. That's oftentimes truth tellers motivations just to make it right, make it right, make it right. Well, you need to, you need to have a more gracious motivation. Um, restoration needs to be your motivation. Check this out in Galatians 6, 1 brothers. If anyone is caught up in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness, keeping watch on yourself, lest you be tempted. So you who are spiritual, Listen, if you're heavy on truth and you like to and and you're eager to point out where people are wrong in their thinking or wrong in their behaving, you need to remember Galatians 6 1 to be, if you consider yourself spiritual at all, to be gentle in your approach and, and to and to be um to be concerned about this person's restoration, not just to point out the truth, not just to point out what's wrong in their life but to have a motivation of restoring them to the truth. If restoration is your motivation, then that means you're balancing grace and truth very well. Um, That means you've picked up grace in your other hand, and now you're motivated out of gentleness. You know, the Spirit is empowering you uh, to be motivated to restore this person and not simply to point out their wrong. Speaking the truth in love also is another key factor. If you're heavy on truth, learning how to do that in love is a big deal. Ephesians 4.15 says this, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Speaking the truth in love. That means being motivated for the restoration. That means having a spirit of gentleness. That means, okay, you're eager to, you have the strength of telling the truth, but you need to acquire the skill of doing it with grace. And you, and you need to be motivated for that, that you're actually going to benefit. It's, it's for the other person's benefit 
that you're sharing these things, not just for your own ego to point out what's wrong, point out what's wrong. And if you're doing it in love, remember it's to bring them back from wandering. It's because you love them that you're motivated to share the truth. So as you can see, whether you're heavy on grace or heavy on truth, you need to learn the skills to, to present both grace and truth to people. Showing them grace is crucial in making disciples and presenting them the truth is crucial in making disciples. You've got to hold grace in one hand and truth in the other. Jesus did this so perfectly as our model. He did this with Peter. After Peter denied him three times, Jesus called out his sin. And, and, and he told Peter that he would deny him three times. And, and then he also, in the other hand, called him back from his wandering and invited him back into the into the mission of making disciples. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He would tell him this three times. So Jesus was able to speak the truth in love and then extend grace to restoration. In the other hand, he did this with a sinful woman caught in adultery. When, when, when other religious leaders wanted to stone her for her sin, Jesus drew a line in the sand and he, he said, yes, this woman has sinned, but also who here is without sin? Let's present grace to this woman. And he both with truth and grace uh, did it that way. So that is the crucial part of making disciples. Part three is grace and truth. And if you're going to be a disciple maker, you're going to need to both correct others and have others correct you. So as long as you're serious about holding grace and truth equally, you'll have no problem being corrected because you realize someone's pointing out truth in your life and, and they're showing you grace. And you'll also be okay at presenting others the ability to correct themselves. Uh, sharing that the way that they're thinking is not lining up with scripture, sharing that the way that they're behaving. Listen, part of making disciples is sharing with people that their thinking and behaving is incorrect. Being human, being part of this sanctification process means that we often have incorrect thinking and incorrect behaviors. And so we all need to become more like Christ and, and like Romans 12 says, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Not a single one of us gets to be perfect here on this earth. We all get to be corrected and to give correction. It is a part of making disciples. It's an important part. So remember to hold grace and truth equally. Grace in one hand, truth in the other hand. And I think you'll do well with making disciples. So that's all I have for this episode. Remember this, your life matters. So keep it in tune.